After a good night's rest at Mazeppa Bay Hotel, we were off to the island. After two days of very strong southwester, the sea was on its head and this would be our best option is to maybe go look for some edible fish. Hi guys, as you can see behind me, the sea is on its head. Two days of solid 60 km an hour southwest. That's a three and a half, four meter swell currently. And uh, not many options. We went to Salt Drop yesterday, same story. We fished on the side for cop. Boiling pot's totally out in the swamp. So it leaves us with the island, this side of the island, maybe scratching for some edibles. If it clears up a bit, we can pop for some garrick. We're gonna look for a cracker, or we'll maybe see what, what edibles and scratching fish we can find here in the rocks. Um, still very nice. There on the island where we normally fish, you can see the waves are coming over the front there. You're not even going to stand here. Here's some guys from Telcom, Sunilalu, with a kite. Um, they're going to give it a shot, but you can see they're standing here on the top of the island, the pinnacle really of the island, to get the baits out and try and get them through those waves. So yeah, that's really tough. No shark fishing today. Not only is it difficult to get a bait out and keep it out, but to fetch your fish will be quite dangerous unless you bring it this side or maybe to the beaches. It's going to be quite tough for them if they do hook a shark. But we opted to, to look for some edible fish and we'll see what we can find. Maybe a cob or two on sardine or chocker. Uh, maybe some muscle cracker. We're going to give it a good shot. On the side here is Tiny's Rock. The spinning rock is underwater, so you won't go there. And then the Gilbert's Rock in the beginning there, I'm not really interested in fishing. And then the rock next to Tiny's could be an option. But Tiny's is currently looking the best. Sometimes just a lot of lines there, the guys do all the drop shot fishing there. And uh, they break off the drop shot, obviously gets stuck quite a bit here off the rock. And uh, sometimes the lines can bug you, but we'll see what we can get right. And see if we can get some fish. And keep an eye on these guys with the cart. Could be interesting and quite amusing. Okay now guys, look at this. This is exactly what really irritates me and so many people in South Africa. Is if guys come to the rocks, they fish, in this case come and drink, and they leave their stuff for other people to clean. Um, I think it's a, the audacity to think people have to clean after you is just ridiculous. So just a word to all the anglers out there and even people using facilities like the Bricks Our Beaches. Get up your game a little without being funny and clean after yourself, really. The island's always very diverse in the variety of species you can target and also the different conditions you can fish it in. It would not be advisable to fish for big non-edibles today as it can become quite tricky to land them and put the gillies or andrew in danger. Hey guys, I've opted to just start off with a paddle tail just till the sea settles a bit, it's on high now. Um, and obviously it's uh, better when you fish paddle tails and drop shot the low tide is normally better and produces more cop, but we're going to give it a shot quickly because it's washing quite a bit um, and we'll start with some some bait fishing just now but first i'm throwing one of the pro rex the new daiwa pro rex plastics and uh, i've adapted to a darker color purely because the water is slightly off color your dark works better the vibration is ultimately what the fish follows and hits so I'm just going to measure it where the hook comes out, keep a little mark and then push it from the front. Try and get it as straight as possible obviously, helps, helps it swimming better as we do in bass. And this is the Daiwa Jigets, oh, well the Kingfisher Jigets, fits nicely on the, the uh, that tail just does everything, that's why the cob hits us. And with that, I'm fishing the Daiwa BG, the new rods. This is the 10 foot 6. Um, heavy spin, and then you get an extra heavy spin. You also get the 11 foot 6 in a heavy spin and an extra heavy spin. Um, I match that with the Saltus 4000. Also, the BG 4000 will be perfect for this outfit. On that, I've got 20 pound uh, Daiwa J braid. And I'm using a Siglon fluorocarbon. I'm using the 0.66 here by the rocks. The water is dirty. I normally use 0.55, but the 0.66 will be 
So always keep in mind you might be hooking one of those bigger cob and that will just assist in landing it. I opted to start with some paddle tails, looking for a lost cob after the night in the rough water. As the water settled, we switched to fishing for Garrick on Popper. There wasn't any chases or action on the Garrick for at least the first hour and a half. Two lost Garrick moved in and two of the anglers were lucky enough to get stuck on them. Taking this Garrick in the, in the side, we've been fishing all morning with Spoon, uh, with Papa, trying everything. This is going on to the last Papa yellow one. It's caught right in the end on a good, good pull. Uh, be brilliant here at Mazepa Bay, out here on the rocks. Great people, great friends to help pulling the fish in. Uh, my first Garrick in quite a long time, I must say. So, so excited, absolutely brilliant. Uh, working on 30 pound uh, braid and lead also 30 on the tight end. Been a great fight. Yeah, about 20 minutes. Uh, good pull out there. Been raining all morning. Got wet, got dry, got wet again. But if you hang in out there, you're gonna catch fish. I'm Ashio Tulara. I just caught this beautiful Garrick in Mazepa Bay off the island. Well done to Mark and Ashil after a hard morning's fishing it paid off. Two good sized Garrick on Popper. I switched over to bait fishing just in front of Tiny's, looking maybe for one of those muscle cracker that's been around. This rough water is their home. Now this was fantastic fun on the new Dawa BG roads, the light tackle, fishing for brasher. And the size of the first brasher was just right to handle them nicely on this gear. Using a pool of water is advisable to sometimes revive the fish before releasing it. The brasher are real powerhouse fighters and you have to hold them as hard as what you can not to get cut off on the rocks. They will head straight for the rocks to cut you off. Lovely on light tackle, they're awesome. That was uh, on the BG 11 foot 6. The heavy spin, you get an extra heavy spin as well. And the salt is 5,000. My favorite edible setup at this stage. That was earlier. So I kept some in the pool. Because the very good are going to fight in the plant now. I'm going to treat them to get them to the bait. They can dash the little side of the light tail. So I'm just going to put two hooks and just maybe see if I can able to throw and get him in a distance. See if we can catch the big one. 
There's not a lot of saddlebacks around for bait on the island. Red bait and crab is commonly used to target the mussel crackers. The next one was a much better size and quite the challenge on this gear. The Daiwa BG rod handled very well and I managed to not let him take a meter of line. What a memorable catch on this light tackle. Brusher, definitely a worthy opponent. It shows you the diversity of fish around even in some bad seas. The popular species around is normally Hull Yun, Bronze Bream, Brusher, Cobb and the Garrick. Alright guys, good start for the trip. Um, a nice little Cobb. I reckon about two and a half, three kilos. Oy, and then I'm hooking our cameraman. Uh, I drop shot on the new Pro Rex, Diver Pro Rex. It was my third or fourth cast, Andrew. Yes, yes. And a nice little size cop we got on the drop shot. I'm going to look for a pool so I can, we can film it in the light to show you guys the beautiful color. And the short period of time we were there, we managed to see all these species. Mm -hmm. 